Today, I wanna to talk about a book that my good friend Andy Hart describes as the greatest personal finance book ever written. High praise indeed. Unfortunately, Andy wasn't talking about my own book, The Meaningful Money Handbook, as epically good as that is. Instead, he was talking about this book, The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. It was written in 2016, and I'd like to give you my thoughts on it as well. So let's put five minutes on the clock, say a quick thank you to my good friends at Seven Investment Management for continuing to sponsor the show, and let's crack on. Right at the start, I'd have to say that if you were to read just one book on investing and wealth building over time, this is definitely it. Its focus is narrow, but that's intentional. Mr. Collins is a massive fan of equities as an asset class, and he focuses almost exclusively on that as an asset class for building wealth for the future. And of course, he's absolutely right to do so. He does talk about bonds as a way of mitigating the volatility of equities a little bit. And as such, he reminds me very much of Lars Croyer, author of Investing Demystified, who you remember I interviewed a few months ago now. The book reads like an extended in-depth advert for Vanguard because J.L. Collins uses Vanguard exclusively for his own portfolio and well, he's at liberty to do that. He's not a regulated advisor like I am. I can't say things like that. But it's not a sort of blind loyalty. J.L. Collins explains why he loves Vanguard so much and why he thinks that it is arguably as good a home as any for your investments. He talks about the mutual nature of the company and their aggressive pursuit of cost reduction so that costs to you, the investor, can be kept as low as possible. And all these are great reasons. Regular listeners and viewers, longtime fans of the show will know that I'm also a big believer in Vanguard. I love the ethos of the company and they are unique. They invented index tracking, or rather Jack Bogle, the, the founder of the company, did back in, I believe, the 70s. The book stays pretty firmly in its lane, talking primarily about investing. It deals fairly quickly in a single chapter about the mechanics of getting out of debt, but it certainly doesn't linger on that. That's okay though, because there really is only one way to get out of debt, which is to spend less than you earn, and with what you've got left, aggressively pay down the debt as quickly as you can. He differs from Dave Ramsey and from myself in that he advocates paying down the highest interest rate debt first. And while I'll be the first to tell you that makes financial sense, I'm a big believer in the quick win of paying down the smallest debt first. And that's why when Dave Ramsey and I talk about the debt snowball, we have you listing and paying off your debts in order of size with the smallest first. I just think that human psychology trumps the maths of interest rates in this case and that actually the impetus from that early win will actually mean that you end up accelerating your payoff process and paying less interest in the long run anyway. In fact I would say that you need to read The Simple Path to Wealth after you have read, digested and acted upon the debt elimination stuff in Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover. Do that Debt elimination first, learn about investing from J.R. Collins, you'll be set for life. So what else do you need to know about this book? Well, it's very US-centric in its approach, which figures the author is an American, and that's the primary audience for the book. That extends to basically recommending that uh, the readers only invest in the US stock market and pretty much ignore global markets. Now, the rationale for that is that in the S&P 500, the sort of main broad index of US stocks, you have access to foreign markets anyway because the companies in that index trade all around the world. And that's not bad logic. But chances are, if you're watching this, you're a UK investor and the UK stock market only represents 7 to 8% of global stock markets by value. So the same logic wouldn't necessarily apply here. I don't think it's smart for you to invest 100% of your money in the UK, even though FTSE 100 companies also have access um, by trading in markets all the way around the world. It's not quite the same. I would definitely preach a global approach to investing. Also really important that when Mr. Collins talks about the student loan system in The Simple Path to Wealth, he's talking about the US system, which is entirely different from our system here in the UK, which is more a kind of deferred tax than a true loan system. So really important to keep that in mind. And of course, the accounts that Mr. Collins talks about, things like 401ks, 403bs, Roth IRAs, all this sort of stuff, 
have no bearing at all to UK based investors. We don't have those accounts over here. We have pensions, ISAs, EISs, VCTs, all that sort of stuff. So you need to understand the UK constructs, but then take the the bulk, the meat, if you like, of the investment discipline that JL Collins talks about and just wrap them inside the UK wrappers. But I do love this book. If anybody said, what is the one book you would recommend on investing? I would actually be, I would find it really difficult to separate the simple path to wealth from Lars Croyer's Investing Demystified, which is UK centric. There's actually a lot of similarities between the two, I think. So I would find it pretty difficult. JL Collins goes a little bit further in that he talks about a, a decumulation in later life and all that sort of stuff. But for the most part, what most readers will get out of this book is the process of investing, the simplicity of investing according to that system and how you can apply it, you know, and you would just need to overlay it with a UK point of view. You know, I love simplicity when it comes to investing and personal finance and this book brings exactly that right from the title the simple path to wealth and really just laced through every page it never overcomplicates things and i love that about this book so highly recommended indeed i'll put a link to it an amazon link in the description underneath the video here it means that if you click that link and buy it i get the teeniest tiniest little bit of uh, commission from mr bezos and you don't pay anymore so everyone's a winner so thank you if you click that link and if you have read the book then let me know what you think in the comments if you haven't yet i know you're gonna love it so definitely pick it up that's it for this week thank you so much for watching i'll see you in next week's five minute friday